Hey guys, Toby Morrison here from CFS Health Centre here in Melbourne, Australia. This week's question and answer is very relative to everyone because we have to do it every single day and it's the topic of exercise. So with chronic fatigue syndrome, there's a big misconception out there that exercise is really bad for us. And truth be told, it can be bad for us if it's done in the wrong way at the wrong time for the wrong person. So today I'm going to clear up a few things with you about exercise, when it should be done, why it should be done, and what stages of recovery it should be done in order to rebuild your strength and condition back up in your body so you can feel strong and healthy. You're looking at a guy in the camera who was once probably 30 kilos lighter than he is now to the point where I couldn't walk one minute without collapsing. Walking in the supermarket or a shopping mall would tire me out. You know, simple things like standing up at a party or an event for more than five minutes, my legs would start to ache and shake and then I would need to rest and restore my symptoms. So, first of all, I don't really like the word exercise because it actually makes it sound like exercise in a gym. And that's not what we're talking about today. You know, yes, a healthy person. And when you do get to a good point of health, which I have and lots of my patients have, you can go and do whatever you want, whenever you want. Surfing, bike riding, rock climbing, swimming, you know, rollerblading, whatever you're into. The thing that, you know, is a big misconception is that graded exercise therapy is really bad. And I think it's got a really bad condensation to it because exercise, you know, prescribed by physiologists, physiotherapists, and personal trainers, the problem is these people don't have a true understanding of what chronic fatigue syndrome is really like and how badly it can affect the body, especially with exercise tolerance. So the problem is people are either getting prescribed wrongly for their exercise program. They usually over prescribe exercises. So doing too much too early, the progression is not incremental. It's, it's too quick, too soon. And the third thing is that people don't understand what it's like to have chronic fatigue. If you haven't had it or you haven't been through it, then you don't really understand what it's really like. And I can say this because I had chronic fatigue myself and I went to lots of different people who thought they knew what chronic fatigue was and they really didn't, okay? So it's important to remember that only you know what it's really like because you're going through it, okay? Only I know what it's like because I've been through what you're going through, okay? I've had hundreds of setbacks. You know, every time I progressed, I went backwards. You know, you name it, I did it, all right? My job is to help you avoid those setbacks and symptoms as much as possible and help make your journey a lot easier to propel you forwards with your quality of life and daily function, which is very important for recovery from chronic fatigue syndrome. Okay, so first of all, let's change the word from exercise to movement because without movement, our bodies are gonna decondition. So the first thing that most people notice with chronic fatigue syndrome is that their muscles can de decondition, they lose strength and stamina, they can't do things where they used to be able to do with ease. Okay, for example, going for a walk. For example, standing you know, on your two feet for more than 10 minutes is hard, okay? What was once easy isn't easy now, okay? So first things first, movement. Restorative movement is fantastic for our bodies because we know if we don't use them, we lose them, okay? The issue is when we're in a virus stage, things like monoglandular fever, infections or co-infections or post-viral syndrome, it is very important that you do not exert the body, which means you do not do exercise in that period of time. Because when we're going through an infection or virus, our body needs the energy to fight off what's going on inside our body. Anything that we exert is gonna tire us out even more. So it is important that in that time you listen to your body, okay? Because your symptoms or warning signs are saying to you, hey, stop, slow down. Now, the problem is when we stop and do nothing, we become more deconditioned, we become bedridden, and then we find it very hard to get started. So this is what it looks like with exercise, and you'll probably relate to this at home. I'm going to do it on the whiteboard. I talk a thing about baseline in my online recovery program where I set all my online clients up with a baseline, which means that they do what they should do without making them feel worse. Once we have that fine line, then we can implement an, a, a movement routine that will benefit them with their chronic fatigue syndrome recovery. Okay, so the person starts there. This is our body. This is at a healing state right here, okay? When we exercise, we actually stress our body out, okay? Now, 
normally when we're a healthy functioning body we're allowed to stress our body out because it, it grows it adapts it pushes itself and then it, it rests and restores and repairs so you can build your strength okay the problem is with chronic fatigue syndrome is every time you do something that stresses your body out there's usually a payback so when you go up with your exercise and the stress tolerance comes up your intolerance comes down and you come crashing down which is what i call the valley of death you know some people have seen that in my videos where you know your symptoms flare up you push yourself too much you, you're bed bound you know and it's usually a delayed onset of symptoms which you know can go anywhere from one to four days really problem is with that it takes another one to four days to get back to your original baseline and then you go again so with this diagram, it's very push and crash. It's up and down. A lot of you probably pushed yourself on the good days and then done nothing on the bad days. And that's completely not what we want to do. So the problem is with chronic fatigue syndrome is it's very, you know, hit and miss in terms of when you feel good and when you feel bad. So a lot of the time, <laughs> you know, you feel really bad. And then on a good day, which is very rare, you go, all right, I'm going to get everything done today. I'm going to push myself. I'm going to, you know, do all the washing and do all the housework. I'm going to do my exercise. I'm going to go for a walk. And then what happens? You crash and you burn and then you hate yourself. You hate the situation and you go, why me? And I know the feeling because I've been there about a hundred times. Okay. So in order to make sure that you stick to your baseline, and you progress slowly but surely with your movement, you've got to keep in mind that this has to be on a holistic level. If you are not sleeping right, if you've got insomnia or you've got irritable sleep problems, if your nutrition's poor and if you have high stress levels, these are going to play a huge part to your exercise program or movement program, if you like, because all areas affect one another. And if they're not in balance, then homeostasis or healing is not going to happen in the body. This is why the program has a holistic approach and this is why, you know, with my life, with my own life, I make sure I have a holistic approach and balance in order to maintain health, which is what our goal is in life. So the solution is we want to do a slow progression, just a little bit where we come up here, okay? Then the payback isn't so bad because it's only minimal, all right? So it comes in waves, just like that. You know, movement can be good as long as you're not feeling any worse than before you started. And this is the things that you have to remember. A lot of you guys and a lot of people I see, clients, for example, they feel good, they push themselves, they feel worse, they stop doing it altogether. Okay? You want to have a slow, steady incline of improvement. You don't want to have to go up and down, up and down, up and down like I did, all right, because it was painful. I cried a lot of the time. It's just not nice, you know? So it's really important that, you know, you don't push and crash all the time because one, it affects your physicality, but it also affects you emotionally. You know, it's a big letdown when you feel bad all the time, okay? So what I'm trying to suggest to you is that rather than have an all or nothing approach, you need to have a steady structure in place first, okay? A day-by-day -day structure where you know what time you get up, what time you go to bed, when you eat your meals, when you have your rest breaks, and more importantly, what movement plan do you have? Because if you don't have a movement plan and you're just gonna guess on any given day, it's a hit and miss game and you're probably gonna set yourself up for failure. If you do have a set movement program that you can follow and that is beneficial for you, then you can start to move forwards with your recovery. Now, exercise should never be done when you have a flu, a virus, an infection, or you have that sick feeling inside you that you know you shouldn't do anything. What I say to my clients is you should never ever exercise if you're below a three out of 10, all right? Now, when you're above three or at four or more, then movement is okay as long as it's suitable for you. Now, don't get all angry at me and go, Toby, you don't understand. I can't exercise my way through this. I totally get that, okay? Some people, literally, their movement program is lying down in bed and then sitting up. That's a movement program, okay? A movement program can be simply sitting at the couch and literally raising one arm up at a time three times, okay? That takes about five seconds to do. Now, this might seem crazy and you might think I'm crazy, but, you know, history says and science shows that if you do not move your body, you will actually decondition and get worse. 
So restorative exercises that rebuild your condition without overloading your body is very simple, very effective, and it's going to help you rebuild your strength and stamina. When people say to me, Toby, you know, exercise is bad for you. You should never exercise. Okay. How are you going to have the strength and stamina to walk from your house to your car, to pick up the shopping, to go to the movies with your friend and do all that? If you don't have the strength and stamina to do that, then you can't do it, okay? A lot of people's goals are to get healthy and to restore their health. And even 5 or 10% improvement can make a huge difference in your daily function and activities, okay? Now, it's important that a solid routine and structure should be built before you start any movement program. A lot of people rush into exercise or movement and they don't have a set routine, they don't have any daily activities, you know, getting out of bed, having a shower, doing your daily chores, whether it's washing, whether it's even talking to a friend or even, you know, being on the computer for more than half an hour or even reading a book for two minutes. We need to implement a daily routine and structure that you can stick to before you start any movement program so it's safe and effective for you. One rule of thumb for everyone out there is that as you're recovering with CFS, you want to make sure that a less is more approach is there for you. A lot of people have heard the word pacing, okay? I like to talk about pacing and progressing, pacing and progressing, pacing and progressing. Pace, progress, pace, progress. So, you know, one thing is management, but the next thing is progression. What you want to be able to do with any movement program is you want to manage what you can do for a good solid two to three weeks without feeling any worse than you did before you started. As your body builds more strength and stamina, Okay, and it might be from lying down to sitting up once every day or twice every day. Within three weeks, that will become a lot easier. Your body will become more adapt. Okay, same thing with progressing. You want to do it slowly but surely. You should only progress five or ten percent from where you started every third or fourth week, provided that your health is maintained that whole time. If you had a setback, if you've gone backwards, if you had a stressful situation, if you had a cold or a flu if your nutrition has been bad, if you have a terrible sleep, then that whole situation changes in itself because you've obviously got to go back to the drawing board and realize what is important and what was missing so you can relink it and have a holistic approach to recovery. So, you know, we could talk about this topic for hours because I'm kind of passionate about it and it's one of the things that helped me very much with my recovery. It got me the guns back, you can see there, all right? But more importantly, it made me feel alive again and it actually saved my life because now I have the strength and stamina to do whatever I like whenever I like, okay? And I think that's what everyone's goal is in this journey is to be able to do that without having to think of the paybacks or consequences with it, okay? So, my suggestion is do 50% less than what you think you should do initially. One of the things with exercise, you want to stop yourself before it stops you, okay? So you should be able to back this routine up and this structure up every single day without making it feel like a chore or making it be hard for yourself. If you're constantly pushing and crashing, you need to readjust your whole life, your whole situation and circumstances to suit your current level of living. Low impact, low intensity exercises are very important. If you do high intensity exercises, that's gonna exert you way too much and make you very tired. I talk a lot about stretching and restoring the body without making it feel worse. So things like restorative movement, such as light yoga, it can be lying down, it can be meditation, it can be breathing exercises, it can be simple stretches, it can be foam rolling, it can be self-massage. These things are fantastic to restore energy and not exert energy. So you want to have a fine balance between working out versus working in. I've seen patients start with one minute walking per day within 12 weeks of sticking to it and maintaining a really healthy routine and structure and obviously getting good guidance and accountability every single week, they've gone on to be able to run within 12 weeks. I've actually seen it in four weeks, would you believe it or not? And that was a lady who came down from America. She came to Australia and her health was so detrimental that she literally could barely do anything when she started. She could barely sit upright for 10 minutes in our office before we started. So we built her up very slowly, but safely and surely. Within four weeks, she jogged for the first time in five years, okay? And I'm not talking about a sprint, I'm just talking about a jog.
but the main thing is that she felt okay and better after it and that's what we want to be aiming for you don't want to be pushing yourself too much and exerting yourself too much you just want to make sure that you don't feel any worse than what you did before you started you don't want to overdo it and push yourself too much and you want to make sure that you actually feel okay after your sessions the most important thing is don't compare yourself to anyone else but yourself and don't compare yourself to your old self which might sound confusing. So what you want to make sure to do is that that was then, this is now. Where you're at right now is where you need to start. For me personally, when I was sick with chronic fatigue syndrome, it was literally starting with getting myself out of bed and sitting up in the lounge room. It then went on to one minute walking where I had to hold my front fence because I could barely sit up. It's probably hard for you to understand because you see me fit and healthy now. I'm telling you, 10 years ago, it was a different story. Okay, it took me four years of a full recovery to get to where I wanted to be, which was to be able to do anything I want whenever I wanted. Okay, now it's a different story. It's 10 years on. I can, you know, I love surfing, I go bike riding, I do weights, I do everything. However, with chronic fatigue syndrome, it's important to have a restorative movement program in conjunction with a holistic approach on your sleep, nutrition, restorative movement, mindset, stress, and anxiety management. Okay because we know that anxiety and depression can have a really bad impact on your exercise tolerance if it's overly too much or if there's too much going on in that brain of yours, okay? I can only speak from experience because I went through this myself. So it's very important that we listen to our bodies. Less is more approach. We need to tattoo that on our foreheads. I, one of my inner circles took a photo of me and put uh, less is more on my forehead, which was kind of funny and kind of true. So consistency over intensity wins the race. Do not overdo it, all right? If you do want to progress your exercise program and you're feeling quite good, do it in a way that's not overloading you too much, okay? You can take all this information, you know, and you can take what resonates and you can lead the rest, but the most important thing is that you don't overdo it. Do not exert yourself too much because your body's already exerted. Slowly but surely you'll get there if you do the right things on a holistic level. Less is more, okay? Consistency over intensity is the key to designing a routine and structure and movement program that will suit you long term. It's not about short term pushing yourself trying to get better. Long term recovery is the most important thing you can think about because in the end we've got a long time to live and we need to make sure we look after our bodies and our health in the right way. I hope that helps. I've probably repeated myself 10 times, but that's okay because you probably needed to hear it 10 times because we're really good at pushing ourselves and not listening to our bodies. So that's it from me. All the very best. Take it easy. Give yourself more. All right. Try not to get everything out of yourself and said, give yourself more inside you. One of the things that I've learned lately is that if you constantly try and get as much out of yourself as possible, you're going to also be completely depleted. So what you want to do is have that balance between you know, obviously giving as much as you can, but also getting in for yourself and giving yourself the energy. Okay. Rest well. Speak to you soon.